What are some scoliosis surgery questions to ask your doctor? It's important to ask questions regarding scoliosis to your treatment provider because scoliosis is a complex progressive spinal condition and that needs to be taken very seriously. There are many different types of scoliosis and there are all different ways to treat it, surgically or non-surgically. The two main scoliosis treatment approaches for patients to choose between are something that I like to call traditional approaches versus modern conservative approaches. It's important to be informed and ask questions because the way a diagnosis is responded to, especially in the beginning, can really change the shape of spinal health and function for the rest of that person's life. Patients need to fully understand the risks and the effects of, of every scoliosis treatment they choose, including scoliosis surgery. So question number one, what is scoliosis surgery? Scoliosis surgery is typically a type of spinal fusion, and spinal fusion involves fusing the most tilted vertebras from the top of the curve to the one on the very bottom of the curve. Now, if you have two curves, it also may include two sections of the spine, and it fuses them into one solid bone. This typically involves removing the, the discs in between every vertebra, removing the posterior aspect of the back parts of the bones, and using rods and pedicle screws to hold the spine in place while these bone grafts kind of take place. There are different approaches to spinal fusion, anterior scoliosis fusion, which is when they access the spine from the front, posterior is when they access from the back, and there's also another type called vertebral bodily tethering is where they're accessing from the side and they're using cables or a tether to try to trying to straighten the spine without using a solid rod, but they all apply screws and pedicle screws into the spine. Do all cases, question number two, do all cases of scoliosis require surgical treatment? No, not all cases of scoliosis require surgical intervention. In fact, conservative non-surgical treatment has proven results. And now we're also seeing conservative non-surgical treatment expand the range to more severe scoliosis cases where we're taking cases that are actually surgical level and reducing curves below surgical level. So therefore they're no longer needing surgery. Now, there's never treatment guarantees, but with early detection and early intervention, there's much less limits to what can be actually performed without surgery and preventing surgery. So we definitely recommend early intervention for conservative treatment options. Question number three, what are some potential risks associated with scoliosis surgery? Well. At any surgery, we know there are some basic things that every surgery has, like anesthesia and all the things that we can happen, but there is definitely infection, there's blood loss. But when we're looking at scoliosis surgery, we're looking at potential nerve damage or some kind of nerve problem, pain associated with the scoliosis, trying to reduce it. Um, it can be some hardware reaction. It can also be hardware failures over time. So there's a lot of things that could be associated with the potential risks associated with scoliosis surgery. It's a significant surgery. It is a major surgery. So therefore, there are significant risks associated with that treatment. Question four, what are some potential long-term effects associated with scoliosis surgery? We know scoliosis surgery is a non-functional approach, meaning it's taking the spine that's supposed to move and bend, and it's fusing that piece of the spine and making it immobile. So when you make this, in this part of the spine immobile, we believe that other areas of the spine have to make up for this immobility, so it can lead to some ligament instability or some instabilities or degeneration above and below these fusions. And we also need it, we know it can lead to limitations of function and movement in that area. We also can have potential increase effects of low back pain at the fusion site. We also know the spine potentially could be weaker and it can be more vulnerable to injuries and trauma. It can also lead to restrictions and activities. We know most scoliosis patients have very little restrictions, very little pain as a result of their scoliosis, especially in the adolescent stage. So therefore, it, it can lead to things that they didn't have before. Um, it can lead to psychological effects, knowing that there's rods and screws in the spine and there could be a fear of trying new things. And then what the big thing is that there's just a big gap and the big gap exists in research and understanding the long-term effect of living with a few spine. You know, what does that look like, you know, 30, 40, 50 years down the road? These surgeries are normally done on very young patients, somewhere 12 to 14, 15 years old at the time of fusion. And we're looking at, you know, living 50 or 60 years with rods and screws in your spine. We have no idea how, how hardware malfunction occurs, how often it occurs. We don't know where it happens. We don't know if they have more pain or disabilities compared to people who didn't have 
surgery and maybe a more severe scoliosis. There's been no data, so there's a lot of lack of information when it comes to understanding the long-term effects, even though they've been doing these surgeries for many, 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 many years. So this is a question that no one can answer for you. So when somebody asks you, well, what's better off or 30 or 40 years from now, are they better off with a surgery or without? The truth is no one can really answer that question. Question five is how is scoliosis treated without surgery? Conservative treatment has made very radical improvements in the effectiveness. Conservative treatment used to be just, okay, let's put you in a Boston brace and just hope the curve doesn't worsen. And it's more like just trying to slow down curve progression that was not very effective. In fact, that type of type of conservative treatment normally led to about only 20% of cases not progressing, where 80% of cases still progressed. When we look at conservative treatment these days, it's typically a multimodal approach that's using many different types of treatment, chiropractic-centered approach, functional therapy and rehabilitation. We're looking at passive action Active therapies and rehabilitation, uh, corrective bracing, integrative home therapy and home exercises. And all these things are done in a structural way to help improve the structure of the spine to actually reduce the curve. So conservative treatment has gotten to the point where it can predictably reduce curvatures while they're actively progressing to not only stop curve progression, but to make it better, and also to reduce curves that have progressed to a smaller number, to a smaller size, so they potentially don't need surgery. So we know patients have to be informed so they can make the very best treatment decision. And when you look at surgical treatment, we know at one point it was the dominant choice and really the only choice that was offered for many years. It doesn't mean it was the best choice or really the best choice at this point. We know modern conservative treatment can work towards curve reduction, increasing strength, increasing uh, spinal mobility without all the risks and limitations associated with spinal surgery. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.